Pair gün polarit, inç pes kidek ay sor yer guşap diyore. Yeva men yer guşap diyore. Yoten yotuges, yes pejiş karut khancan. California Ay Center. Ay sor menk liveng, yeva şat heda kırkir hagortuma badrasterem tezi het. Tuk im hürüs şat lav kidek. Inke mer California Ay Center'in retina specialist ne. Im hedesi ay sor Dr. Rizwan Bati. How are you doing, Dr. Bhatti? I'm doing great. How are you today? Welcome. Good to see you. Uh, so we have a lot to talk about today. Yes. Uh, it's more of a retina talk. So we're going to talk more about things that affect the retina and why they would need injections. Mm -hmm. I'll do a little bit of translating in, the, in Armenian, and then we can jump right into that and maybe take some calls from the viewers as well. Yeah, sounds great. Urem and Dr. Batin, menk amerigai mech gasenk retina specialist. So retina specialist hadagi masnagede. Ima Evropa shadan kam chunin asong, senk Rusastan, Hayastan, Fransa, achki bejishke Evropa entan rabes amen pangene, katarakt gane, retnai bojumner gane, laser gane, aknotsuguda amen pangene, nunis gob gane. پایت سال چه ور ات بچیش که آمین مکپانی مچ مسنگیده. آمریکایی مچ سرده اورینا کینکات ویت سات دارپر مسنگیدونی. آچکه چهار سات کینکات دارپر مسنگیدونی. یه وایس مسنگید نره آمین مگ ات مک جوگه گسروی دارینروف یه وادور سپشیلیست گتارنن یه وام منور ات بچوم نره گنن ات هیوانت نرو ورا ورایت پروبلم اونیم. قرار می‌نیت مر ویدیو این گرنان که ارتال I see their website ne www.calicenter.com. Yer tak ne akte specialist we work with. Kadesnak Dr. Batin. Inka USC hamalasarani masnakede. Yev inka retina specialist de hargav kidek amenit retina macula consultants. Pasadena mer retina clinica. Yev nu ijamanak van nice yev Glendale office nernal as polor retina pujum nergening. So I saw bit hosing menk. Այդ հիվանդությունները աչկին բետ կունենա մեկը, որ ինչու բիտի սրսկվի։ Եթե մեկը պժիշկը սեր են, որ կո աչկը պետք է սրսկեն, ինչու համար, ինչ է բատճարը, ինչ է գերը ատ աչկին, որ հիվանդը պետք է ասեղապուժման saved my vision, has kept my vision, uh, considering all the things that has happened, whether they have diabetes or they have macular degeneration. Uh, miraculously, through the research, we've learned that there is treatments for this, and that's one of the things that you do and you're best at. So I wanted to ask you, because uh, since this is our show, what are some of the reasons that somebody would need a retinal injection, some, a vitreous yeah. injection? Yeah, that's a great question. You know, there's a number of conditions, but I think let's start by focusing on the two most common. Uh, the most common conditions are both diabetes and macular degeneration. Patients need injections of medication directly into the eye to help localize where the medication goes so there's little to no side effects in the rest of their body and you can get a high concentration of medication directly into the eye close to the retina. Now, most of the time, this is because there's some type of new blood vessel growth or leakage from existing blood vessels. So I think we're gonna go over a few videos to show what we're talking about. So if we talk about diabetes, there's a few different types of diabetes, but we'll start out talking about the most basic form of diabetes in the retina. And if we look at a photograph of the back of the eye with this video, what it's showing us is there's blood, there's yellow spots represent lipid that is leaking from the blood vessels into the retina. So you can imagine if there's lipid and there's blood, it's because the blood vessels within the retina are damaged and that's causing this change in the retina. When that happens, it affects your central vision. So if you look at a cross section of a normal retina, that dip there is the way that it should appear because that is our central vision. That's where we read, watch TV. That's our area of highest visual acuity, right there in the center where that dip is. And then if we look at those other straight lines, we can see that they're sort of being elevated. 
they're being elevated because there's leakage in those areas. And you can see those white deposits showing up there. Those are representing pockets of fluid that are leaking into the retina from the damaged blood vessels. And they're causing that central area to sort of become like a little mountain or a little mound instead of a dip. So almost turns into like a volcano type of shape where it's elevated. And now people have blurred central vision. Either things just look hazy in the center as represented by this video where you can see but not clearly, or you can even have more loss of vision where it's even more than just haze. Sometimes there's dark areas or even distortion. So the keys to reducing the chance of having this type of problem is living a very healthy lifestyle, controlling your blood sugar, controlling your blood pressure, because those are the factors that cause damage to the blood vessels. When we look here again at this video and we look at the back of the eye once again, we can see that there's different types of treatments. One of them that sometimes is used is laser treatment. Now, we don't use laser treatment as much as we used to in the past because of some of the newer medications, but this definitely in the right patient can help reduce swelling. And that does that by reducing the leakage. Good. Thank you, Dr. Bhatti. That was a wonderful presentation. Uh, <laughs> Okay, so diabetes, controlling the blood sugar, controlling blood pressure, living a healthy lifestyle. Healthy lifestyles, yep. exercise, eating healthy, yep. right? Absolutely. And all of those can help contribute to somebody who has this kind of issue moving towards becoming in a, in a better situation, not losing their vision. Absolutely. We see many patients that with those changes in their lifestyle, as you mentioned, with improvement of blood sugar, exercise, what they eat, and blood pressure, they can definitely reverse some of these changes and, lead, and live a long life with really good vision. Got it. All right. Thank you, Dr. Bhatti. We'll get into that a little bit later when we talk about intravitreal injections. What's the second reason why somebody would need uh, injections? Another leading cause of the need for injections is age-related macular degeneration. So many of you have probably heard about this condition. Macular degeneration is a condition that develops on its own over time, and as the, def as the name says, it's age-related. Classically, it starts developing in the 60s. You know, we think there is a genetic component to it also. So part of it is we just inherit but we'll talk about also there are things that we know can sort of slow down the progression of macular degeneration also. I think we have another video here now that we can review some of the findings for macular degeneration. So if we look in the eye once again and we look at the retina, this time we see we don't see all those areas of bleeding and lipid because it's a different mechanism by which this happens. So if we look at this area in the outer retina, the area that's in the square, this is the area of the photoreceptors. And if we zoom in, we can see, first of all, those yellow spots that we see on the video. Those are what we call drusen. Those are deposits in the retina that develop over time, over the course of our life. And what they do is they sort of weaken the outer layer of the retina. And when the outer layer of the retina weakens, the blood vessels that grow underneath the retina, the normal blood vessels, they find a way to get into the subretinal space. And when that happens, they grow, they can bleed, or they can leak fluid, and that's wet macular degeneration. And that can cause distortion to the photoreceptors, as you can see in that photo. 
So when there's distortion to the outer layer of the retina, what you see as an image also becomes distorted. The eye becomes damaged, the photoreceptors no longer function properly, and you don't see things straight and clear. It causes the central vision to become distorted, blurry, hazy. We'll look at uh, some videos here. Again, you can see it's just distorted. It might look centrally where you can't see. You might have a number of blind spots that are there because of the damage to the photoreceptors. And sometimes, unfortunately, you can have all of those things happen where the patient just cannot see centrally at all. So the vision loss is permanent without any treatment. If caught early, treatments can reduce the damage to the eye and decrease the severity of vision loss. Very good. Thank you, Dr. Bhatti. Uh, again, macular degeneration. This was the wet form. Uh, there's the dry form, the wet form. Uh, this is fantastic uh, what you brought today with you. Thank you for that. Mm -hmm. Now, the diabetic retinopathy, yes. the wet macular degeneration, all of them require a procedure where you would inject medication into the eye. Yes. So maybe you can walk us through how a typical injection would work. Sure. So the, as we mentioned before, the point of the injection is to deliver the medication directly into the retina, directly into the eye so it can diffuse directly into the retina. So the area we need the medication to get to, Dr. Akhanjian has circled there, it's the back of the eye. So when we do the injection, as we talked about the different conditions for which we would do, diabetes, macular degeneration, the injection and the medicine and the needle are injected into the vitreous gel. And you can see on that video down at the bottom, where you can see a needle simulated coming into the eye where the medication is injected into the vitreous and it diffuses into the back of the eye. So it's really important that that medication is injected in the right spot. We numb up the eye very good. These are all office-based procedures. We can do this in the office so that the patient does not have any discomfort or pain, deliver the medication, and they can go home immediately after their injection. Got it. Thank you very much, Dr. Bhatti. Now, based on that, that um, uh, illustration we just showed. Yeah. How long does the medication stay in the eye? How long is it effective? Yeah, it's, the medication stays about 28 days, so roughly four weeks. There are newer medications that are coming out or in clinical studies or that have come out recently that the thought is that in some studies the medication was able to have a longer lasting effect. But traditionally it's been about four week uh, interval where the medication stays at a therapeutic do dosage within the eye. Okay. All right. And then how do you know if you need to inject the eye a second time? Yeah. So we know that in, when people start treatment, we know that they need a series of injections to begin. But what we're able to do is because of the imaging in the eye, we're able to look at the response to the medication right in the office. And you can see in this video, it's called an OCT. That stands for Optical Coherence Tomography. It's a photograph that we take right there in the office and it's a non-contact photo. We don't have to touch the eye, we don't have to numb up the eye or anything, but it gives us a cross-sectional image of the eye, almost like a CT scan. And usually we can get this within about 30 to 40 seconds on each eye and we're able to see is the retina responding to the medication? Is the swelling coming down? Is the bleeding coming down? And based on those images, and we are able to show the patient those images also, we're able to see what the response is and how much more treatment the patient will need. So right here we can see a cross-section. Yes, that, that's for example, when a patient would have diabetes, that's an example of a patient with diabetes. Here is a patient with macular degeneration. And we can see that here's macular edema. And based on the pattern of what it looks like and what areas of the retina are swollen, we can see what the problem is. And here you see a patient with a macular hole. So this imaging really not only helps us diagnose, but 
it helps the patient understand what is happening also. I'm sure you experience that too. When you show Absolutely. patients these pictures, yep. they're amazed. And actually, a lot of times before I even come in the room, they've taken a sneak peek at the photo and they tell you that they're getting better. So that's nice to see they too. They can see the improvement on the scan. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Good. Studio Thank you, Dr. Bhatti. This was excellent. Uh, technology office image laser net of orga korsvatsvi garnank men kitnal yete petke noren sriskvi achkma kam voch arten ov vor yegeren e office kam ov vor kide mega kam hed katser e megume vor petke sriskvi gdesnak vor arach vor bezish kseinaga mtna arten computerin vra hivantin nkarnere tervats gla sevu germak nkare kam sometimes garna garmir garmir ganach tegin kuin unena patsadi hatakin nkarne yevat CT scan of Gernank Menk Desnal, Yete Dago Urutska, Betke Sereskavi, Gam Yete at Ansal Amesva Sereskuma, Arten Eskesere Daga Makrel, Yevaleves Bek Chunenank. Hima Gernala, Megan Campet Kuninas, Gernala, Yerguan Campet Kuninas, Gernala, Megatasan Campet Sereskavaze, Pats Gesereskin, Yep Bor Betke, Yete Desam Bor Daga, Lika, Jurga, Irunga, Pidis Sereskavi, Gamadi Gerna Aveli Shadanal, Yev Shadanane, Desochunet Gesis. Arten gamats gamats gentrona gorsen tenel. So, Dr. Bati, the question I know they'll ask, yeah. and the lines are all full, yeah. but before we get there, yeah. uh, how many times do they need to be injected? Like, there yeah. is patients that get injected once, they're done. And I know there's patients that have been injected maybe 20 times. Yeah. And the, I think it's an issue of chronic, a yeah. chronic state yeah. versus not, but I mean, you'd, uh, you'd be able to explain it better than I can. Yeah. No, Why I, does somebody need 20 plus injections? Why does somebody get healed in one or two or three? Yeah, so um, that, like you said, that's a very common question that we do get. And we do tell patients that these are chronic conditions. They are vascular problems with the blood vessels and it's hard to correct these permanently. And once there's damage to the blood vessels, they do need ongoing treatment. For something like macular degeneration, a lot of times we tell patients these are lifelong, lifelong chronic problems that will need lifelong treatment. At the same time, there are patients with macular degeneration that we can treat at a six, eight week interval, two month interval, three month interval, a longer interval once the disease process has stabilized. And with diabetes, it's also a function of how much swelling is there, how long has it been there, and how well the patient is doing with their blood sugar. We have a whole spectrum of patients. There are patients that need treatment for six months to one year and they never need treatment again. There's other patients that need treatment ongoing for a very long time because they still have a lot of swelling there. Right, so it's a combination of getting the injection, lifestyle change, blood pressure, controlling the diabetes, yes. and all of that co collectively, they can ultimately be free of injections. Some patients can. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And you know, the other thing is some people respond differently to the medications than other patients. And also the sooner you get treatment, it's uh, people tend to do better, both vision wise and needing less treatment. So it's important to get regular eye checkups, whether you think you even have a problem or not, because sometimes, as you probably experience also, patients don't realize that they have a problem in one eye because they can see pretty good when they use both eyes and they don't realize it until they maybe come in and do an eye test and cover one eye and realize they don't see as well out of the eye. That's correct, that's yeah. correct, yep, yeah. okay. And then one more question before yeah. we take to the live calls. What's the difference between the injections? So there's names like Avastin, Lucentis, Ilea. As a retina specialist, when you look inside the eye, yeah. do you know when you wanna use what medication? Or is it a kind of like a, let's try this, let's see how the patient responds to this, and if, uh, it's, not, if it's not responding, let's try something else. Yeah. Do you kind of already go in there knowing what you wanna use? Yeah, I mean, that's, um, that's a complex question to sort of try to tackle in a few minutes time, yeah. because uh, there's a lot of nuances. We usually start with a medication that we know is more broad-based and is gonna be usually helpful with most patients, and, and also it's covered by insurance. So we have to look at all those different factors and tailor it to each individual patient. Sometimes if there's a very large bump or a lot of blood or a patient has one eye only, we might use a different medication we think might respond differently. Um, the difference in the medications, it has to do with how they bind the VEGF 
molecule. There's a difference in the receptors, and maybe we can do a different show on that on a different day. I might even need to maybe bring some diagrams for that and refresh my memory on some of the biochemical properties. Yeah, thank you, Dr. Bhatia. Yeah. Lines are all full. Let's hear what the, our viewers have to say. Hello, Winch Peskar Nangoknel. Parif says, I'm not television in tiny chat to take hunt from you. Thank you. Live in Gurnan Khosil. Winch Peskar Nangoknel. Parif says, Parif says, Parif says, Parif Yeah. Okay. Okay. Kanatçı <gülüyor> 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 So, ador hamar aç ki şat nurpane, yev mişt yevor lises korzogucun, gam sırskum, mişt lav kagapare vor yergort hagan kagapar arnes, yergort nunis yerort. So, ayo, garacar gem hrametek, garnam desnal, kezicis tevov gesem, inç betkunis, anen çenen, yev garnal al kezi aingomen perem mer ofisi, noren mer retnai timu uning, mer masnaket ner uning. Ayo, ayo, yes, bağa çem yusur, yes. Doctor <laughs> 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 Okay. Okay. You got it. Kezi of bit badaskhanem. Sorry, shat jamanak chuning. The call was about branch retinal vein occlusion. Maybe we can talk about what that is. Yete gernak video in yertal. Yeah. So, you know, the vein, the arteries bring blood to an organ and the veins drain the blood away. So what a vein occlusion is, is when the vessel that takes blood away from the retina gets blocked. And typically the way that happens is when the artery compresses on the vein and narrows that passageway. It can, the risk factors for vein occlusion include diabetes, high blood pressure, high cholesterol. And if that happens, all of the blood, instead of flowing out of the retina, it gets backed up into the retina. You get bleeding throughout the retina because of a lack of oxygen and you get a decrease in vision because of swelling in the retina also and you need injections for this. Okay, it hits to yogurt and uncle. Uh, Dr. Bhatti, injections would help this as well? Yes. I mean, we have to see how long it's been there, but absolutely mm -hmm. the standard of care treatment for this is injections. Yes. All right. Shad Jamanak Chigar, sorry, Chigar Sakhezi Hasanel. 
terpejiske vor bit puja si retina specialist betgela. Yete retina specialist e garna kezi okne asorhet. Yete guzeir yergor tagan kagapar haramatsek merkova garna kezi okne. Thank you, Dr. Bati. Fantastic show. We fit it in in 27 minutes. Great. Thanks for coming. Thank you for having me. Kisher pari polorit. Kal